a man enduring a high voltage electric shock of 1 million volts, not for once, but constantly for 72 hours. It might remind you of this scene from Christopher Nolan's The Prestige, but David Blaine performed almost the same act in real life in New York City for 72 hours. This is real. Now, we are talking about freaking 1 million volts, over 8,300 times higher than normal household voltage that can cause severe burns, cardiac arrest, and death with a loud zap sound, burn, and hiss. Your body could char until it becomes brittle and breaks apart. But Blaine still performed this on October 5th, 2012, wearing just 15 kilograms of gear with a chainmail Faraday suit and streamed it live on YouTube. He didn't eat or sleep during the stunt. Insane. The jaw-dropping part is that when the stunt ended, Blaine was intact, not hurt, just needed help to walk and a routine checkup at the hospital to make sure he was okay. So that's David Blaine for you, a crazy magician who usually performs magic tricks on random streets with random people, without needing any center stage, spotlight, perfect environment, setup, or even special props. Sometimes he also performs this enduring type of body horror act, which some people find extremely gimmicky and think David Blaine is nothing but a fraud in the name of magic and stunts. But is that right? Isn't he one of the pioneering and the greatest magicians of all time? Or is he simply a big fraud? Let's find out. You know, some people dismiss magic as a mere illusion, but good magic tricks have always captivated people of all ages. However, David Blaine realized the true essence of magic lies not in the trick, but in the audience's reaction. So, he performed on the streets, making it free for all. Suddenly, magic seemed cooler and way more exciting than just being some wizardry on a stage. But when Blaine debuted on ABC in 1997, some people criticized him harshly. One critic even said his tricks were simple and could be done with cheap props from a store in Times Square. Another magician, Jamie Ian Swiss, said Blaine was only good at taking people's money. But if you notice closely, Blaine's magic shows have evolved over time. At first, he used to perform simple card tricks on TV shows. As YouTube became popular, Blaine's magic shows changed. He started doing more impressive tricks on the streets to intrigue people in real life. But now, his appearances involve crazy stunts that blur the line between what's real and what's magic. The interesting part is that sometimes he presents these stunts as magic tricks, but they're actually real. For example, in an interview with comedian Rick Jervis, Blaine pierced a needle through his arm without losing any blood, just sitting on the sofa casually. Yes, you heard that right. Jervis couldn't believe his own eyes. And if you think that's all, let me give you another crazy example where Blaine was buried alive in a coffin. What's the worst that can happen? Well, he might run out of oxygen. He could suffer from multiple organ failure. The coffin might break. The glass could shatter. And he could end up squished on live TV. But he didn't care at all. The things Blaine does are like really extreme challenges, and some seem like magic tricks. How do these two fit together? That's the real problem. David Blaine is a magician who has been inspired by Harry Houdini, a legendary illusionist and showman from the early 90s. Both magicians combine extreme stunts with tricks, which has led to skepticism for some. But big crowds have always been drawn to their performances. Blaine's fascination with Houdini began at a young age when he saw a picture of Houdini chained up on a building, looking scary in a straitjacket. This made a big impression on him, and he's been heavily inspired by Houdini ever since. Now, speaking of all these, we need to know a little bit about Blaine's childhood and upbringing as well, because that's where everything stems from. David had a really rough childhood, as his real dad died from a heroin overdose when he was just a kid and his single mom, who was a teacher, had to raise him alone. She focused completely on her son after he tried to commit suicide at 18. During David's childhood, she gave him a deck of cards, which he loved a lot. 
He also got some real interest in magic because his mother loved watching him do tricks. She was his biggest fan. She wanted him to go to a really good school, but sadly, she also got sick with cancer and couldn't make it happen. Blaine really admires how strong his mom was during her illness, and it made him want to see how much he could handle extreme things in his life. For example, as we discussed the needle through bicep trick a while ago, there was no so-called trick involved in it. It was real. There's a medical explanation for this, which is extremely risky, but still possible. Passing a needle through a particular spot in the magician's arm involves a fistula, a scar tissue pathway, similar to historical cases, like a man with a body fistula enduring sword stabbing, unharmed. Blaine likely created a fistula in his arm by repeatedly damaging it during his practice sessions, and that's how he did his needle trick. Take a look at this insane preparation footage. As you can see, he thinks it's important to challenge himself because being too comfortable stops you from doing great things. So, David aimed high and took a big risk with his first major stunt, being buried alive for a whole week. No prize for guessing that the stunt was inspired by Houdini, which Houdini himself never got to do. Blaine started by practicing fasting and sleeping in a casket. Finally, on April 5, 1999, Donald Trump gave him a send-off as he got into a glass casket filled with six tons of water. He didn't eat for two weeks, but he drank water and had oxygen and a catheter for safety. People came to watch, even in the middle of the night with flashlights. But as there's a saying, you can't make happy everyone at a time. Some critics speculated he had a trap door, making him a fraud. But that was just the beginning. David was about to face an even tougher challenge in the year 2000, when Blaine decided to do something really crazy. He froze himself in a big block of ice in Times Square for 72 hours and spent a whole year practicing for it by getting used to really cold water. Blaine wore light clothes like a long sleeve shirt, pants, and a hat. They put blocks of ice all around him, but he still could breathe and drink through tubes. There was another tube to take his pee away. The ice was see-through, so people could see he was really inside it. But the problem was, while he was on the ice, Blaine couldn't sleep because if his skin touched the ice for too long, he could get frostbite. Until 55 hours, everything seemed pretty much okay. But after that, things took a disturbing turn. Blaine started seeing hallucinations, like talking to imaginary people and feeling like spiders were crawling on him. He also lost track of time, thinking hours had passed when it was only a minute. Things were getting worse. So, the people helping him decided to let him out early because the crowd heavily backlashed, demanding his immediate release. It was dangerous because he could have become seriously ill, possibly beyond recovery due to the extreme cold or shock. Blaine stayed frozen for 63 hours, 42 minutes, and 15 seconds before they used chainsaws to extract him. They rushed Blaine to the hospital, and it took him a month to get better. There was no room for doubt that this stunt was completely real and honest. But David didn't stop there. He started thinking about even riskier things like eating live snakes and doing stunts from famous places. Each new stunt was more dangerous than the last making him more excited. In one stunt he called Vertigo, he stood on a narrow pillar in Manhattan for two days without eating anything. But these stunts were nothing compared to what he did in September 2003. He got into a see-through box three feet wide, seven feet long, and seven feet tall, made of a special plastic called plexiglass. In London, near the River Thames Park, David Blaine hung a box 30 feet high and stayed in it for 44 days, consuming only about 1.2 gallons of water daily. This stunt garnered significant media attention, with newspapers covering it over 1,600 times. When he exited the box on October 19th, he was immediately hospitalized and turned out that the 44 days of water-only consumption led to a 60-pound weight loss and a 33% decline in various bodily functions causing Blaine to believe he experienced mild organ failure, suffering lasting damage. Naturally, if there were any clever tricks involved, why would he risk his own body to endure such pain and harm? 
David Blaine attempted to break Houdini's breath-holding record despite doctor's warnings. He rigorously trained by fasting but ultimately failed. His first attempt ended in him passing out due to extreme nerves. Later, with Oprah's help, he tried again. According to the research later, his heart was beating really fast, going from 120 beats to 150, even though he tried to calm down. After 8 minutes, he thought he might fail, but he kept going. After 12 minutes, his ears were ringing and his arms felt strange. By 13 minutes, severe chest pain started, and 2 minutes later, he couldn't catch his breath and his heart was racing faster than usual. At 16 minutes, he thought he might need help, but then he realized he just broke the world record. Still, he kept going until 17 minutes and 4 seconds, breaking the record live on Oprah. After this, David Blaine became really famous, but he became too confident to perform dangerous stunts now and then. In 2011, David Blaine introduced the Upside Down Man stunt, hanging from a crane for 60 hours without food or water. The electrified stunt with 1 million volts of electric shock for 72 hours. And in 2020, the Ascension stunt, floating with 52 helium-filled balloons to over 24,900 feet. These are some of his most visually striking performances. However, many wonder if Blaine's extreme feats are real or just clever tricks. As a magician, some of what he does, like card tricks, is an illusion, while his mind-reading acts and mentalism performances use a combination of genuine techniques like reading body language and statistical probabilities. Like, if you ask people to pick a number between 1 and 20 quickly, they likely choose the number 17, which is known as the 17 syndrome. This is exactly the knowledge Blaine used in his trick with George Bush. And that's the root of all skepticism. People wonder if all his extreme stunts, like his magic, are merely a show-off with clever tricks or if they're based on some tricky knowledge. If they are, it would be fraudulent activity and it wouldn't make any sense. But surprisingly, most of his extreme stunts are 100% genuine, a result of pure hard work and practice. For example, he truly held his breath underwater for 17 minutes or pierced his arm with a needle. In the case of electrified, as an MIT physics professor John Belcher explained, Blaine was wearing a conducting suit through which all the current passed, without harming his body. And during both the performances of Frozen in Time and Ascension, people thought that probably this time Blaine couldn't take any more and he might die. But guess what? He always came back. So, what's his secret? Nothing but deep research, extreme preparation, and practice, without which no one can ever touch the greatness. But some people still believe he is a fraud who's using some demonic power and black magic to fool people. So, is David Blaine real or fake? It's for you to decide. While most of his acts are impressive magic tricks, his stunts are truly jaw-dropping and without any trickery. However, what do you think? Is there any foul play involved, or is he simply the greatest showman of all time? Thanks for watching.